I don't mind if you have 10 past papers at hand. I'll always make this 11th one unique and special and you'll be surprised. Oxford is definitely better than USD or something like that, okay? Hi everyone, it's me again. If you're new to the channel, my name is George, I'm from Hong Kong, and I've recently finished my Master in Statistics degree at the University of Oxford with a distinction. Well, congrats to me, I'm pretty proud of it. So in this video, I'd just like to compare my experiences doing a taught master's degree in Oxford and an undergraduate degree in HKUST, the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Some people have been telling me that they are very curious about what it's like studying at Oxford, um, if you're one of them, you'll want to keep watching. Please bear in mind that all the things I say are based on my own thoughts, feelings, and experiences, and I'm comparing two different things that are different in two dimensions, so like Oxford versus UST, master's degree versus bachelor's degree. So don't take anything I say personally, or extend it into like very general conclusions, such as Oxford is definitely better than UST or something like that, okay? So let's get straight into it. My MSc degree was one year long, and in terms of how the academic year was structured, we had three terms, the Michaelmas term, the Hillary term, and the Trinity term. Each of them lasted for eight weeks. The first two terms mainly consisted of lessons with no exams, while the Trinity term was for revision classes and exams. In addition, we had to do a dissertation during the summer after the Trinity term. In UST, I did a BSc in Risk Management and Business Intelligence, or RMBI, and it was a typical four-year program. Every academic year consisted of fall, winter, spring, and summer semesters respectively, but people sometimes called the winter and summer semesters breaks, which was fair enough because lessons mostly fell on only the fall and spring semesters, each being 13 weeks long, typically, with midterm and final exams. However, people usually still did optional courses and internships during the winter and summer breaks, and that was what I did as well. Overall, I'd say that the academic year structure in Oxford seemed more stressful to me, because all the teaching was condensed into eight-week terms, and the cumulative content all the way throughout the year was examinable in the final exams. But I guess having said that, I still, I guess I still loved how exciting it was. In terms of grading, in my opinion, it was much more straightforward in my MSc degree than in my undergraduate program. So my master's consisted of three graded components, two practical assignments contributing 25%, seven or eight exams 50%, and the dissertation 25%. My results in these three components would be combined to give a single overall grade, and that's it. On the other hand, my BSc in UST comprised various courses, each of which resulted in a grade based on different criteria, so it was relatively more complicated. Courses might or might not have participation marks, they might or might not have exams, they might have different marking schemes. I tended to spend more time thinking about strategies to balance my time among different tasks, among different courses, to maximize my grades. The overall grading scheme was relatively simpler in my MSc, and I'd actually prefer this more because my efforts could be more focused and my learning experience could be more fruitful in general. The next thing I want to compare between the two degrees is the types of lessons we had. So in my Oxford degree, we had lectures and practical sessions, whereas in UST, we had similar lectures and lab sessions. The lectures were usually where we passively listened to lecturers to absorb knowledge, while the lab or the practical sessions were where we actively engaged in some coding to grasp some important concepts or knowledge and so on. We also had something called classes in our MSc, which were akin to the tutorials that we had in our BSc. Before the classes, we were given problem sheets to attempt, and during the classes, which were also taught by our lecturers, we would cover the problem sheets and attack the problems together. When I did my BSc in UST, most tutorials were covered by tutors who are not the lecturers themselves. Overall, I'd say the lesson types in my BSc and my MSc were very similar, and there wasn't too much of a surprise in this respect when I did my master's degree. Ah, workload and difficulty. So many people jokingly say that UST stands for the University of Stress and Tension, because students are usually pressurized by the heavy academic workload, the preparations for their career path, etc. I'd say that's pretty true. My four years in UST indeed felt stressful at times, and that applied to many of my peers as well. As for my MSc in Oxford, I think the content was even more challenging than that in UST. 
which was normal because it's a master's degree after all. So I really, really needed to spend much more time digesting the challenging content. The paces of the lectures and classes in my master's program also tended to be faster than in my undergraduate degree. So I had to do a lot of self-learning and studying to catch up. I just like to highlight a little bit of a gray area here in terms of workload. I think the amount of work that had to be submitted and graded in my MSc degree was actually less than that in say the final year of my BSc. But then the actual amount of effort that I had to put in turned out to be more significant in my MSc. For example, although the problem sheets were not submitted or graded, I still had to work through the problems to understand the concepts and prepare for the exams. I just couldn't think of a way to like not do it but still survive the degree. So by and large, I would say that the Oxonian academic workload, Oxonian is the adjective of Oxford, was greater. But then I did have a lot more fun learning all the difficult stuff. There's no doubt here, students were generally more active and answered or asked more questions in class in Oxford than in UST. The atmosphere of lessons was generally more active in my Oxford experience. But then, I'll be honest, personally I'm quite shy, so I don't think I've ever asked or answered any questions in class. At the most, I only individually asked lecturers questions at the end of lessons or via email. What's also worth mentioning was the peer relationships. I think we were usually happy to help each other out and discuss problems together in Oxford. Possibly because we followed an absolute grading scheme, meaning that we were graded against a fixed marking scale rather than being graded by our relative performance as compared with our peers. Well, in UST, contrarily, some courses used a relative grading scheme, meaning that in essence, we were kind of competitors or enemies. So some students might not be that keen to share their academic thoughts and resources with others. I mean, it's no one's fault really, but I personally enjoyed the peer learning atmosphere in Oxford better. The availability of academic resources is something I really want to talk about. So I observed this interesting trend where Oxford made many, many more past papers and exercise problems available to students than UST did. Oxford actually has this system called Oxam, which brags about a huge collection of past papers for students to use. So why did this phenomenon occur? Why did we observe more academic resources available in Oxford than in UST? I'm not 100% sure, but I do have a hypothesis. When I studied in UST, many lecturers preferred making their exam papers just by reusing or slightly adapting past paper questions, probably for convenience. That's not to say all lecturers do so, but I think that might be a reason why some professors wouldn't release too many past papers or sample problems to students. On the other hand, my experience in Oxford told me that professors could seemingly make exam questions so creatively that they would look different every year. Simply drilling was apparently not effective enough for scoring high in the exams. We really had to understand and digest the important concepts and techniques instead of merely relying on past papers. So the lecturers, professors might be thinking, hmm, I can always create an exam that can actually test you on how much you know. I don't mind if you have 10 past papers at hand. I'll always make this 11th one unique and special and you'll be surprised. So yeah, I guess that's an interesting difference between my academic experiences at the two institutions. Both my degrees in Oxford and UST involved a big project. In my RMBI course in UST, we had to do an FYP, a final year project, that spanned a whole year. It was a group project supervised by professors, and we worked with companies to produce nice deliverables related to the RM and slash or BI areas. The FYP would involve supervisor meetings, company meetings, presentations, and report writing, etc. I personally thought it was an absolutely fun experience to bond with my groupmates and to learn new things and try new things. And to be fair, it's also a great item to include on my CV. As for the MSc in Statistical Science degree at Oxford, I wrote a dissertation under a professor's supervision. The dis was an individual project that spanned two or three months with an upper limit of 12,000 words. We were allowed to propose our own topics and seek the department's approval, while alternatively, we could also choose from a set of predefined topics provided by the department. Compared with the FYP in RMBI, the DIS was much more technical in nature and involved fewer interpersonal interactions. 
In terms of soft skills, the FYP would seem more challenging as it required more communication and collaboration skills. Finally, stepping outside the academic world, let's talk about extracurricular activities and social events. Many undergraduate students in Hong Kong enjoyed being executive committee members in their universities' students' associations. I, for example, took part in the RMBI Students' Association in UST and organized activities for members. UST also offers many foreign exchange opportunities for students. To be honest, I would actually have stayed in the University of Lund in Sweden for a half-year exchange, if not for COVID. Yeah, that's a shame, but at least these international exchange programs do exist and could broaden students' global horizons. By the way, I also miss the variety of activities and food in Hong Kong. I usually hiked with friends or had nice meals with them when I had free time. Now, studying in Oxford also means that I could do a lot of special activities, such as punting, which is steering a boat with pole, and attending social events like formal dinners, where we were dressed nicely and ate potentially good or bad food with friends. And I also played pool more often here in the UK than in Hong Kong because it's free in many colleges. However, I did feel that it's perhaps a little bit harder to make friends with non-Hong Kongers in Oxford due to cultural differences or a lack of common topics. We probably grew up in very different places with a diverse range of backgrounds. So it's sometimes hard to get past that small talk level and get to know people more deeply in conversations. Of course, those interactions were still great, but then I'd feel more at home or like I'd feel a stronger bonding when I was socializing with Hong Kongers here in the UK or back in Hong Kong. So there you go. I've just described my respective experiences studying in Oxford and studying in UST. They were similar in a lot of ways, but also different in a lot of ways. If you're a student in Hong Kong or in the UK, do you have experiences other than those that I've talked about? Let me know in the comments below whether there is anything I've missed or simply share your experiences with me. Please give me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends if you haven't already. Stay happy everyone and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers guys.